Well, this week, Russian President Vladimir Putin plans to meet with Chinese leader Xi Jinping during a summit in Uzbekistan. This as Western sanctions continue to beat down the Russian economy. But as the stalemate wears on, so does the energy crisis in Europe after Russia turned off the Nord Stream 1 natural gas pipeline. We heard from EU Commission or European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen earlier today addressing the energy crisis. Take a listen. Russian gas accounted for 40% of our imported gas. Today it's down to 9%. But we also see that Russia keeps actively manipulating our energy market. I mean, they prefer to flare the gas instead of sending it to Europe according to the contracts that are existing. So this market is not functioning anymore. Joining us on this now is Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman, who is looking at what's ahead for Putin's energy war. So uh, where should we start with this? What's the first thing we need to know? I mean, let's start with Europe. They have a much worse problem than we have here in the United States. I mean, luckily, we have um, plenty of natural gas here in the United States. Um, prices here are double what they were a year ago, and those are futures prices going into the winter. So we are going to have higher heating costs here in the United States but nowhere near as bad as they're going to be in Russia, where gas prices are around six times higher than they were at this time last year. And when you just uh, heard Ursula von der Leyen say uh, Russian uh, import, gas imports are down from 40% to 9%, that's partly because Europe has been weaning itself off of Russian gas, but it's also because uh, Russia just stopped sending gas through that pipeline. Their gas comes to, from Russia through other means, and they could shut those uh, down as well. And um, the Russian gas company has actually been running commercials, advertisements saying we are going to freeze Europe this winter. So, I mean, the gas supplier that does have contracts to deliver, I mean, these are business contracts to deliver this energy uh, is now um, threatening, you know, hostile action basically <laughs> against against European businesses and European consumers. So um, Putin has completely weaponized energy uh, which is something a lot of people thought would not necessarily happen. It has happened, and this is going to be a wild winter, winter in energy markets. Who's going to blink? I mean, you have, a, you have a story up on the Yahoo Finance platform right now looking at that issue, and there seems to be some debate here about whether, you know, whether, A, this is the right strategy for Putin, and whether, indeed, he's going to back off at some yep. point. So Putin can cause pain, without a doubt. Uh, he already is. That's higher prices. Um, some analysts think it's possible that in addition to shutting off gas, uh, he could shut off oil supplies. Now, he gets most of his energy revenue from oil sales, uh, much more than he gets from gas. So if Putin were to say, uh, uh, we're going to stop delivering some oil to Europe and to global markets, um, then um, he would be forfeiting a lot of energy revenue. But that could also push oil and gasoline prices up everywhere, um, not by a ton, um, you know, we're talking maybe 2% of world supply that might affect. But, you know, oil moves on the margins, mm. um, and uh, that could push gas and gasoline and oil prices up everywhere. So that's one thing he could do. There's a lot more going on. Europe is supposed to ban most imports of Russian oil starting in December. It, uh, uh, some people think that's not going to happen um, because it would just be too difficult to pull off. But like I said, it's going to be a wild uh, mar winter for energy markets. And let's talk about the other constituent on the other side of Russia. China is what I'm talking about. Um, and Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are meeting right now right. in Kazakhstan. This is the first time what they've met since the pandemic, right? Um, and China is incredibly important for Russia in this. I mean, Russia could not be doing all of this that you were just describing without China. Right. So, I mean, this is a whole other subtext uh, to what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, and I, I doubt Xi Jinping is saying, hey, great job on that war in Ukraine. Uh, Xi Jinping is in a bad position because just a couple of weeks before Russia invaded, I mean, we think Xi Jinping did not know Putin had decided to invade Russia. He said the, the relationship between China and Russia has no limits, uh, implying that he would support Russia no matter what. Now, after the invasion, the fact is China has not really done anything to help Russia. Mm -hmm. They have not uh, increased, uh, you know, substantially increased it, uh, imports of technology and other things that Russia can no longer get from other countries because of the sanctions. Um, they are buying Russian oil at a discount, so China is saving money. Um, on the war, uh, but they ha have also not criticized the war. And the, the reason this is so important to China is Taiwan. So um, China is looking at, uh, you know, the United States and Europe's reaction to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, wondering, 
is just something similar going to happen if we would ever decide to invade Taiwan? So um, this is this is one of the most important things about the Western reaction to the Russian invasion of Ukraine is what message it ultimately sends to China. Um, so there's a great argument for that is one of the main reasons it is so important to stick with Ukraine no matter what and be uh, allied with them until the end, until Russian forces are out of there or at a minimum back to the back to the pre uh, pre invasion um, boundaries.